Welcome to the Invite Health Podcast, where our degreed healthcare professionals are excited to offer you the most important health and wellness information you need to make informed choices about your health. You can learn more about the products discussed in each of these episodes and all that Invite Health has to offer at www.invitehealth.com slash podcast. First time customers can use promo code podcast at checkout for an additional 15% off your first purchase. Let's get started. Researchers have come a long way since the original discovery of the very unique amino acid carnosine. This was originally discovered in 1900. And a lot of the primary focus was that it was found in skeletal muscle and seemed to play this very important role when it came to muscle recovery and energy production within the muscles. Now that we can fast forward over a hundred years, we are now really seeing why carnosine, this amino acid that is basically made up of beta alanine and L-histidine. So it's a combination. So it's a dipeptide. So it has beta alanine and L-histidine. Why it is so important to our overall health and wellness. And I'm going to talk about that in some detail today. I am Amanda Williams, MD, MPH, and let's get right to it. Let's talk about why carnosine is playing this very important role. Certainly the original discovery was it within myocytes or muscle cells, and they found very high levels of this dipeptide. But now they've found very high levels in neurons. So when it comes to our nervous system, when it comes to the brain, we find carnosine throughout the body wherever there are high energy demands. So think about those particular areas such as the heart, such as the brain, as well as our skeletal muscle. And it functions within these different areas to really help to support the metabolic demand and the energy production within those regions. But we also now recognize that when we think of the aging process itself, as carnosine levels begin to diminish, we start to see an acceleration of aging, like with many other things going on in the body. When we have a decreased amount of something, oftentimes things start to go haywire. And certainly this is the case when we're looking at carnosine. Now, initial studies, as I mentioned, really focused a lot on skeletal muscle. And certainly it plays a very important role into that. As I mentioned, when we think about skeletal muscle recovery, so after exercise, for example. But we also know that it seems to exert this multimodal activity, including being very important when it comes to targeting free radicals. So it has its own antioxidant capabilities. It is very, very beneficial when it comes to easing inflammation. So now that we recognize all of these different components, now we can start to see why it is that carnosine has been looked at in a whole slew of different chronic disease states. When we're looking at type 2 diabetes, when we look at cardiovascular disease, we recognize that carnosine is a very important dipeptide because of its antioxidant properties, because of its anti-inflammatory properties, and also because of the fact that it works as an anti-glycation agent. So if we have too much glucose that is building up, creating damage or misfunction throughout the body, which we see most commonly in diabetics, but anybody can experience glycation, then we want to be able to combat that. Now we see that carnosine is actually doing that. So it's gone well beyond that of exercise physiology to help to increase exercise performance. Now we realize that it actually has these benefits in terms of preventive and therapeutic properties when it comes to this whole wide vast of chronic disease states. And we see this even when we're looking at the aging process. And we know that chronic diseases accelerate aging, hence inflammation, because every chronic disease has chronic inflammation associated with it. The more inflammation, the more aging that we get. We can see this 
in the, the telomeres. And we can see how shortening of those telomeres are directly associated with low levels of carnosine in the body. So this is certainly a problem because if we can supplement with carnosine and put that back in, we're actually helping to protect those end caps of our cellular DNA. Now, when it comes to the way that carnosine has been looked at as neuroprotective, um, there was a really interesting study done over in England back in 2013, and it was published in the Journal of Stroke, where they were recognizing that when they gave stroke patients this powerful dipeptide, remember it has the beta alanine along with histidine, hence its name is carnosine, that this really helped in terms of allowing the brain to bounce back. So it had the cerebroprotective effect to it, and it allowed for more functionality to come back after this damage that was brought on because of an ischemic stroke. Now, we have also seen in the Journal of Neurobiology Aging the way that carnosine plays a role in Parkinson's disease. And this was another one of those interesting studies where they found this associated um, pathophysiology. And so with low levels of carnosine circulating in the body, there was a higher amount of symptomology that was occurring in patients who had Parkinson's. And they found that when they gave them carnosine supplementation, that it had very beneficial outcomes for these. And the mechanism by how the carnosine was actually working was as a free radical scavenger. So going after those reactive oxygen species. So we see all of these different ways in which the carnosine is supporting the muscles, supporting the brain, supporting the the nerves and the way that these nerve signals are going out, we've actually even seen the way that carnosine helps to support neurotransmitter release in the setting of, say, low levels of serotonin, which is associated with depression. So a lot of really interesting research out there on carnosine. Now we have our L-carnosine plus formulation, which is this powerful dipeptide. And when people are utilizing it, it can be for a whole different, you know, variety of reasons. For many people who maybe have the early signs of their kidneys starting to slow down a bit, then taking carnosine is certainly advantageous, not only for its antioxidant properties, but also when we think about that role of glycation. So if there's excessive glycation that ex- can accelerate the damage done to the kidneys, we want to be able to fend that off. And they've been able to to see this time and time again, um, seeing it in the setting of diabetic retinopathy retinopathy. So that's the damage done to the eye brought on by glycation. There was a study done over in Germany, published in the Cell Physiology and uh, Biochemistry Journal, looking at the use of carnosine as an anti-glycator when it came to diabetic retinopathy. So when you think about things like cataract formations and um, diabetic retinopathy, where you're getting vascular damage along with nervous system damage that feeds into the eye. And they found that oral carnosine supplementation helped to reverse and prevent further damage of retinal vascular damage after just six months of carnosine supplementation. So there's a lot of different utilizations of this powerful dipeptide in the human body. And so much research continues to come out in terms of its antioxidant properties and how those antioxidants that are derived from carnosine are really doing so much to help the health of the brain as well as the muscles. Because we know if our muscles are prone to excessive oxidative stress, then this can create problems as well because it can create excessive lactic acid buildup. It can start to create a, a situation where we have even weakening of our bones underneath the muscles. So all of these things are things just to consider, but we know that for many people who are in the realm of anti-aging medicine, carnosine is kind of this unknown amino acid that does so much in terms of supporting the genetic 
material, which is our go-to guide for all of our cells, does so much when it comes to easing inflammation, when it comes to fending off oxidative stress, and when it comes to cellular energy production and recovery. So I certainly encourage you to check out our L-Carnosine Plus, really fabulous formulation. That is all that I have for you for today. I want to thank you so much for tuning in to the Invite Health Podcast. Remember, you can find all of our episodes for free wherever you listen to podcasts or by visiting invitehealth.com slash podcast. Do make sure that you subscribe and you leave us a review. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Invite Health. And we will see you next time for another episode of the Invite Health Podcast.